Three, two, one. Blowing Up Latina, Season 2, Episode 17. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Glowing Up Latina. Hi. Hey. I'm Christina. I'm Amanda. And I'm Liana. How are you guys doing today? Happy Friday yet again. We made it Happy through another Friday. week. Hey, hey, happy, happy Friday. Friday. God damn. <laughs> it's just been a long ass week. <laughs> this week, Wednesday in particular, felt like the longest day ever. I don't know what it was. Um uh, yeah. That Wednesday. was Tuesday. Yeah, that was Wednesday. Tuesday for me. Tuesday yeah. felt like it went on for years. I was like, why <laughs> is it still the same day? <laughs> yeah, Monday, like Monday rolled around and then Tuesday I was not feeling well. I was out of commission. I had I had to call out sick because I was just like, no, it's this is not it. I can't I can't function. And then when I got back to work Wednesday and I was still like in a ugh, like I was like, ew. I had the ache. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh, not the ick. Yeah. But it's Friday. We're here. Finally, it's the weekend. Yeah. <laughs> How was y'all's guys' week? What went on? Oh, it's my anniversary this week. Oh, yeah. Yay. Yay. Happy anniversary to you and Nora. Thank, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Four years. Feels oh, like. Yeah not that long honestly <laughs> <laughs> you know it's crazy you guys had posted up right stories and on your instagram and i was just like wow it's been four years it feels longer though and then uh, like i don't know babies. Like... i was like babies yeah oh, so God. yeah four years it's funny because norn and i have spent our <laughs> basically our entire marriage and like this new covid ish world like we oh, have like yeah. one year of like before covid and then mm -hmm. it's all been like covid after that literally right. your second anniversary was no first our first, first year first anniversary, anniversary. Yeah. oh wow mm -hmm. your first anniversary. oh that makes sense no that makes sense yeah that was got like... married the the last year before mm -hmm. 2019 yeah. yes i had my wedding cake we had our wedding cake the year after you know how you like save the top of your you save your mm -hmm. wedding cake I had yeah, it I like saved. it <laughs> I tasted it it wasn't bad wouldn't recommend though didn't eat the whole thing I'm not <laughs> looking I'm not like looking one bite to it. I don't think you're supposed to eat the whole thing I think you're just supposed to eat a bite <laughs> did y'all try to eat the whole thing no oh, okay. I was like I tried to bite and I was like no I'm not doing this but you can have it though <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Um, nah, I don't know. I don't think I'll like I'm not looking forward to it because it's been in the freezer for a year. So it's like freezer burn, like ooh. Freezer. I mean, what flavor do you have saved? Is it the uh, oh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't know if I have the cannoli <laughs> flavor or if I have the um fresh strawberries and cream. I hope they gave me cannoli because if they gave me fresh strawberries and cream as the first one. Yeah. As the first tier, that's gonna suck. Like, what how good are those carrot cake? Do you like carrot cake? I, I I'm actually, the I like carrot cake. I enjoy okay. carrot cake. I do. I do. Oh. If it's done right, yes, yes, I enjoy carrot cake. Not everybody can make a good carrot cake, but it wasn't my choice as a wedding cake. That's fair. <laughs> oh goodness. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and get into today's episode because I honestly feel like it's going to be a little long. I think we could talk about this topic forever. <laughs> but actually, before we do, some housekeeping up top. We are, what, three episodes away from the season finale, the Q&A. We have a decent amount of questions. I'm pretty excited. But, you know, if you guys want to submit some more, there's always that opportunity. You can go to our Instagram. The post is pinned right yep. there you can leave a comment you can dm us you can email us there's a google form in the event that you want to be anonymous because you want to be what is it a chismosa there we go <laughs> <laughs> um, we welcome it all and then we are currently nine subscribers away on our youtube channel before our next giveaway you guys so yes just need to go subscribe to our youtube channel hit that notification bell <laughs> and 
once we reach 100, we will have another giveaway. And Mm -hmm. we almost have everything. Morgan, your package will be out soon. (laughs) Fingers crossed. Don't hold us to that. We're trying, girl. Trust us. Yes. (laughs) But yes, so I think that's everything. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so today's episode, we're actually going to be doing on machismo. And I don't know why we didn't do it in March. I think we just got busy Mm -hmm. um, because it would have been the perfect episode for Women's History Month. Mm -hmm. But better late than never. Mm -hmm. And this was a fan request episode, wasn't it? Yeah, I I believe it was a fan request. I think a fan did uh, DM us and asked us how we felt about the topic. And we yes, because she was because re- she was recently she recently got married. Yes, yeah. And so I think I missed that altogether. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I apologize. Yeah. yeah, I think yeah. I do want to say two things at the beginning of this. Mm-hmm. Machismo is very much toxic masculinity, and while toxic masculinity and machismo do affect women, it also affects men. But we are not men. So the only view that we can speak from is the effects that it has on women. Mm -hmm. Maybe one day we will be able to bring men on the show to talk about that, but we are not experts in how that negatively affects them. And point number two, there are like several different ways to address this topic. There is a very like academic, I can give you a bunch of studies on how it affects women type of way. But I think what works best for like this podcast is that we speak through our experience. Even when we do give you guys like stats and factual information that we link to, like we still are speaking on that through our experience. So everything we say today will be based on like our experience and how or the ways that machismo has like manifested itself in our lives. Mm -hmm. So with that let's go you guys (laughs) so for you guys how would you guys define machismo i think it's like i mean it's hard because like it's it it literally is like what you said it is toxic masculine masculinity that is such a hard word to say (laughs) (laughs) it's a tongue twister um it's definitely that and i don't know it's like oh I feel like machismo, it's like I always picture like this big dude and like he's got a huge mustache. (laughs) He's got like, (laughs) he's like a huge country man. That's how I imagine like a machismo guy or dude. They're just like big and brawly and just like, they're just, yeah, you know, (laughs) just big, like (laughs) really big personalities. It's funny, right? You say like to you, you see the physical appearance of that, right? To me, mm-hmm. it doesn't like it doesn't need the the physical appearance does not need to match the toxic masculinity that you see or you know you think of. Well, for me personally, when it comes to machismo, I think of more of your personality, more of how you come off, mm-hmm. and the things you say, and. It's, I know we hear like mom say this too, like it's my way or the highway, but it's, that's how I see it mm-hmm. in terms of the, of, you know, machismo, it's my way or the highway. Like, and, okay. You could say what you want to say, but we're still going to do what I want to do at the end of the day. And that's that. That's how it comes up, comes off for me. I think I'm like yeah. somewhere in between you guys. Like I definitely have Liana's like picture of it. Like you will really think it's like these, like, big dudes who are like very like authoritative but then like I see where Amanda's coming from where that's not always the case like it there are people that you like wouldn't suspect to be like this very like hyper masculine like um emotions are for girls type of person like that's the kind of things Mm -hmm. that I think of and Mm -hmm. like you'll never see me cry because I'm a man and men don't cry and blah, 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 all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I definitely think that like the concept or the definition or whatever you have behind it is that you have men who see women as inferior and always do. So they then have to be the dominant person in any interaction that they have with women. 
Mm -hmm. Right. Also, I think like within the like machismo like concept idea, there's like this role that like men have to be the breadwinners Mm -hmm. and that like you can't make more than the man that you're in a relationship with. You can't do the things that are considered masculine. Mm hmm. Like, I think we all grew up with, like, people telling us, like, you can't do that. You're a girl. And that's for boys. Yeah. 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 Or even, like, you know, you see the father-son relationships where it's, like, you're not supposed to cry. You don't cry in front of people. You don't show emotions in front of, you know, people. And displaying actions that way in that sense is a characteristic of being machismo we already know like the effects it causes like like it's like it shows like we can see that you know telling your kid not to cry telling your son specifically not to cry in front of people what that does in the future in the long run but it's just toxic everything <laughs> about it, that just just that in itself it's just toxic i think another definition that i thought of is like these men that have this machismo mindset like they always feel like they have to be served Mm. or like um everyone owes them something kind of like because they work so hard because they're the breadwinners because they are the superior and they are the head of household you know like they always feel like they have to be served and catered to that i saw a lot growing up yeah and I think somewhere in that whole mesh we just had, there's a definition for machismo in there. I think we described like maybe more qualities, but there's a definition in there, you guys, I promise. Yeah. Um, and also, so before when I didn't really know which way we were going to do the episode, I was doing like some research and there, I didn't realize it makes sense though. There isn't like, a, there's an opposite to machismo, like for women, mm-hmm. marianismo is what it's called. Oh, and it, basically, it's the idea that women should be like, you know, maternal, soft. Mm-hmm. Um, what is it called? Modest. There we go. Docile. Women are emotional like that. The traditional like hyper feminine things that you think that a woman should be. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. later, I have a fun little because there was one piece of it that I couldn't let go that I want to share with you guys, but we'll get there. Um. But you touched on it a little bit, Liana, that you remember seeing like the whole men are served before like the women and children. Mm -hmm. What are some other examples of machismo that y'all kind of saw growing up or within your family? Right. Because men are supposed to be considered to be the breadwinner and earner. Like, so right. So as a wife, as a spouse, significant other, you take on the domestic responsibilities and let's say you know the man doesn't have to work that day they can feel okay well i'm just gonna chill because i work i i do hard labor i do manual labor i'm just gonna sit here and not do anything mind you your wife is still out here doing the daily things that she does at home let's say she's a housewife right that's still a job at the end of the day right so like we understand right that's not to say you're not working hard as a man but still like step in step in for your wife and help her out to me it's like wouldn't you want to enjoy that quality time with your significant other so therefore pick up pick up where your wife meet your wife halfway meet, meet your significant other halfway so that way you guys can enjoy enjoy the time together Uh, For me growing up, examples that I saw were more of like in the kitchen where it was like, especially during family parties, like I would notice the women in my family feeding, like serving an actual plate for their man, Mm -hmm. for like uncle, their their person, whatever. Like they would just be serving their plate, give it to them. Mm -hmm. And then... They would eat the food, but then they would just leave it there. Mm-hmm. They won't throw it out. They won't pick up. Back they won't. They'll things. they'll just leave it there. And then and then the woman would come pick up the plate, 
go throw it out for them or wash the dishes or like all that stuff. I, I used to see that all the time. And I never really thought about like, that's the crazy thing too, because you grow around it, you grow up around it and you think that's normal. Mm -hmm. And it's like, if I, like, it, it was just like in the back of my mind, like that was just a thing that happened. That's just how it was. And I never questioned it, never thought about it. Like, it was just like, yeah, my Thea cooks in the kitchen. Theo eats his food mm -hmm. and Thea washes the dishes. Yeah. And that was it. Like, I didn't think about it. Yeah. Um, but obviously you grow older and you're just like, fuck that. Like, <laughs> like wash your dishes, <laughs> clean up after yourself. <laughs> right. Like I, I tend to see that like during Thanksgiving in particular, right. Cause we have Turkey and for as long as I can remember the men in your, in the family are supposed to get the Turkey leg. And mm. interesting. Yeah. I never heard that one. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Like guys, well, again, it's not for everybody, but like, as I remember the men in the family always get a turkey leg. My grandfather always got a turkey leg. And then right after my grandfather comes, you know, the firstborn son, right? Mm -hmm. So um, gets a turkey leg. And it still continues on to this day, right? I just, I'm like, what if I want a turkey leg? <laughs> what if I want that? And, you know, I, so I, I question it sometimes and they're like, no, it's supposed to go. I'm like, oh, whatever. It is what it is, right? We let it happen. We let it slide. But it's just, it's, it just becomes just a part of tradition and be, it, it's easily to, to fall into that. Right. And, and sometimes it's hard to question it, even though I'm just like, well, I really don't agree with this. I want a turkey leg. I can eat a whole turkey leg by myself damn it but um in one sitting but you know yeah we're so used to seeing that and it's hard to sometimes get out of it and I remember when again I brought Constantine on you know brought him into the family and my grandmother was like are you gonna feed Constantine I was like well first of all I'm not married to him <laughs> let's, let's start there okay I'm not married to him but and then second like he 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 can come with me into the kitchen and we can but my grandmother was very much a no you have to serve your serve your man and i did what was told right because that's my grandmother right but i did it in a way where i it still made me feel comfortable or like i was basically standing up for myself where i'd be like okay constantine I'm going to show you what's at the stove. We're going to show you what's cooking. So that way you come with me, you stand up and you come with me and we'll do this together. I will, I will put the food on your plate, but we'll do this together because this is my grandmother and this is her house. Fine. I'm going to respect it, but I'm not happy with it, but I will do it. And I'm going to show you, and you're going to take your own plate and you'll sit down by yourself, not by yourself, but you sit down, you'll, you'll sit, sit down, down by yourself. <laughs> In the corner. In the <laughs> corner. You're on timeout. <laughs> Sit down and take your plate. And, you know, it, it, you know, it's it's quite the situation, but um I think it's hard because on one hand you have like your family structure traditions yeah. being yeah. enforced on you. And most of the time our older family members are enforcing like very outdated like machismo type mm -hmm. uh, rituals traditions onto us so it's hard because like you don't want to be disrespectful to your grandmother but like you like you're like if we were at home you'd be doing this yourself <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I'm sure. <laughs> my gosh that's so funny that brought me back to when Norin was at when Norin came to our first family party like the first family party that we had and uh one of my aunts, I don't remember who, but one of my aunts came out to me and she said, oh, you have to feed Norman. That's what they used to call him. And I was like, I was like, oh, OK. Like, I didn't question it because like that was I was like, OK, fine, whatever, I'll do it. And I go up to the to the table to get yeah. the plate and everything. And I didn't tell Norman about it. I was just going to do it and just give it to him. 
But Norin found me and he was like, hey, what are you doing? And I was just like, oh, I'm serving you your plate. He was like, why are you doing that? And I was like, oh, because I'm supposed to. And then he was like, <laughs> he, he literally took the plate out of my hand and was like, I can do it. Thank you very much. And I was like, oh, OK. And then I literally walked away. <laughs> my aunt <laughs> found me and she was just like, oh, did you feed Norman? And I was like, no, he um, he can do it. He can do it. And my aunt yeah, was like. She, I know I offended her that day, but then I was like, I'm not going to fight over who gets to feed who. <laughs> like, it's not, it's not that deep. <laughs> it's also, not like, deep. <laughs> how do I know that you're going to like what's be like, what's being cooked? Like, I can't, I can't do that for you. I can't be like, okay, I'm going to give you a whole bunch of enchilada sauce and, you know, Godspeed, my man. Like, hopefully <laughs> your tongue don't fall off pull out your mouth like oh, I, I don't know what to right. tell you so Constantine doesn't like spicy food you know like the spicy food it's things like that where you know we are we experience machismo firsthand and it's a learned behavior and me personally I I saw it with my parents and that's because again my mom my grandmother taught my mom my grandmother's mom taught her so it's it just goes down the line and it just becomes like a, a second nature thing where you just like, okay, I'm going to do this for you. But without really thinking and questioning, like, yo, I don't have to do all this. You can do it as well. Like it's, it's, it's not rocket science. That's for sure. Yes. Sometimes it's a lot of work. It is, you know, but you can definitely do it. I think for me, it's a, it's weird because like I didn't grow up with my dad. So like my mom was like the head of the household mm -hmm. and like did everything, like did all the things. So I'm not going to say that like I completely grew up with out machismo. I don't think that's true because there was still like elements of it being enforced on me. But like everywhere I looked around me, there were strong women doing both jobs. Mm -hmm. And so like when we are at like Thanksgiving or we're at things with my brothers, like I don't ask my brothers if they want me to give them a plate because they're men. I do it because they're my little brothers. Right. Like, I mean, they're grown ass adults at this point, but like still, they're still my little brothers. <laughs> so there were definitely toxic men in our family. And there were definitely men who are not toxic, but had toxic tendencies because that's what they grew up around. Right. And those were the behaviors that they inherited. Mm -hmm. And, you know, to some extent, like they've worked to like get rid of those. But other things I feel like are so hard to get rid of when they're so like, like ingrained, like almost in your DNA, mm -hmm. I want to mm -hmm. say, because you have to want to like do the work. And sometimes people just don't want to confront that stuff. But there is like one example of like a very like toxic like male figure that was in our lives and really just like the tr traditional things that you would think of. Like, I am the man, you must obey me. You have to do what I say. Like, no matter like how much they would screw up, it was oh. still like somehow somebody else's fault somewhere. Oh, yeah. And um, so, yeah. You know, we hear stories about our older generations, like being in these like, abusive relationships these like non-healthy relationships and it's like mm. the the thing that they tell you is you have to stick by your man you have yeah. to stick with your husband because you thick and thin. yeah mm -hmm. you married him before god and that to, bond is unbreakable go to church talk to a priest you know like talk like yeah. about your marriage and whatever like you guys are like missing god and all that stuff like that's that's what was always taught. And that's so crazy. It's just so wild. I it never is. can just, never understand. Yeah, no. I think, again, we all grew up around it. We have those tendencies. We have those things here that we just said, like, sometimes we give into because that's what we knew growing up. Yeah. Growing up. Growing yeah. up. Growing up. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. It's much useful in Latinx culture. It's... Man, it's hard because it's like you don't want to be disrespectful to the people, mm -hmm. like to your family members. 
Yeah. You don't want to be disrespectful to yourself. You don't want to be disrespectful to your partner. Like it's hard. Mm. It's a yeah. hard concept to navigate. Right. Again, going back to what Liana was saying, like it's hard to understand that you're told you have to be with, you know, your man through thick and thin. But it's like also before before him, before we I was me and I will always continue to be me. We do this together as a partnership. We do 50, 50. And they're going to be, and, and that's not to say that every day it has to be 50, 50, because you know, some days are harder than others. Some weeks are harder than others. So, right. So I'm going to have to do what? 70, 30. We get that. There's an understanding there for that, but I am not your mom, not your parent. I'm not going to do any of those things. Don't look at me as if I'm going to do it in that in that manner i think that like it's so great to like acknowledge that some days it is 50 50 and some days it's 70 30 like you said because like that's what you're in my mind because i'm not married that is like what you're supposed to do that's how it's supposed to be but i also think that like the like i said conflicting like ideals come into play because like Mm -hmm. if you're if your love language is like acts of service and the way you do that is through like cooking for your partner. It's like, hmm, I don't, I'm not doing this because I'm a woman. I'm doing this because this is how I tell you that I love you. <laughs> love you. Right. And that's what I'm saying. Right. So when was it? Um, Good example. This week, Constantine, was it Monday? Had to be a Monday, starting off the week a little rough. He came home really late. I got home, I got, usually, you know, he's home before I am, but this time I got home before he did. I made a dish and a side dish. So by the time he got back home, I was like, hey, why don't you want to take a shower? Because I was already done cooking. I had already showered. I was like, hey, you want to just hop in the shower? If when you come out, you know, I'll, I'll have a, you know, a hot plate for you ready, you know, and had a hot plate. He had a nice glass of wine. He was like, oh, I should come home late more often. And I was like, hi, you're cute. I love you. (laughs) Don't get used to it. (laughs) I love you. I know you had a rough day, homie. Enjoy this hot meal. (laughs) Because uh, this is a 10. And they're not always going to be 10s. So, (laughs) but he understands that. He understands that, right? He started laughing himself. He's like, no, I know, I know, babe, I know. So, yeah, but. I did it because I know he he came home and he's working hard. He were, had a hard day. So I'm not going to like, you know what it is to come home and you had a hard day. and You're just like, I'm hungry and there's no food. Like, I get that. Like, I get that. But that's because I love you and I did it out of love. Not because you said, Amanda, I expect food to be on the stove or on the table by the time I get back home. That's a different story in a partnership, Mm -hmm. which is different than what machismo comes from in a partnership, you understand that it's not always going to be 110%. Like there's always going to be like those days where it's going to be 20, 80, 30, 70. It's going to, it's going to, but that's part of life. It's part of being in a relationship, a healthy relationship where you talk about things where it's just like, I really don't want to watch you guys know I do not like to wash dishes. You guys know I do not like the kitchen. <laughs> and that it worked out for me because Norrin loves being in the kitchen. And that's great. Like Go I'm Norrin. I'll do your laundry. I hate it, but I'll do your laundry. I'll clean the bathroom. I'll I'll clean around the house and all that stuff. But like I am very slow in the kitchen. So if you want it done fast, you gotta do your stuff. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> But I think like one thing that's pretty evident in our conversation is that like machismo Mm -hmm. relies on women being subservient to men. And Mm -hmm. it tells men that like you are not a man if you can't like quote unquote control your woman. Like you are not Mm -hmm. a man if you are not bringing home the most money and taking care of your family and providing for them. Right. My next question for you guys is like, why do you think that machismo like has such a strong hold on like the latinx community and in latinx culture like even all these years as we like progress more as a society like there are just some like toxic things that we cannot let go of 
it becomes a part of like I said it becomes a part of tradition just becomes a part of the way the family functions and because if if that has not been an issue in the past why change something that is that that isn't broke Mm -hmm. and I hate I hate to say that I do hate to say that because it is like it does doesn't make everybody happy to do that right to to be so like you said docile or just like is it submissive or subordinate yeah that's what like it tells us we need to be or passive or passive to it right so they're not going to it's not gonna it's not going to change so it's just like, all right, I might as well, I'm, I might as well just continue to do, do this. And I don't want to cause any fuss. I don't want to cause any commotion. I don't want to be that person to mix up things. So I'm just going to let it continue to be the way it is. And um, for some, I, sometimes it's easy to be complicit. And I hate that. I hate that, that it's, that and it turns into that mindset, that mentality of, oh, I'd rather be complicit and just like continue to do it. So that way I'm not upsetting. I'm not upsetting anybody. Like I'm, I'm not upsetting my man. I'm not upsetting my family members. I'm just going to continue to do it. And I think like mm. that was evident, like in your story that you were telling about your grandmother and the turkey legs yeah. also, like <laughs> you just like don't want her like ruffle feathers. No. And I think it's like it, it's hard because there are things within machismo that aren't necessarily like harmful. If it is, I think, I think maybe this is what it comes down to is that like, if it's your choice, like if you are truly choosing to do that, then that's, that's for you. That what that is what works for you. And it's not like physically, mentally, or emotionally harming you then, you know, who is anybody to tell you how to like live your life and live within your family. But if it's this thing that is forced upon you, like Mm -hmm. you have to be this way or this will not work, then that's when it gets like toxic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can only speak from my experience, but like I'm a first generation generation um, Dominican American, right? So my parents were both from, they were bo- both born in the Dominican Republic. And so like they had, I think, I think what I'm trying to say, like, I feel like it's harder for first generation people to kind of like break from that, um, that, uh, oh God, not stereotype. Norm. Not sure. Yeah. Because like, it's, it was so, it's like so close to home still, I think, Mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like my dad grew up working on a farm, you know, like he was on the farm doing hard labor and his sisters weren't necessarily doing that. Well, they were going to school. They were helping out at the house with their mom, with my grandmother. They were like helping cook dinner, like, because the boys of the family were doing the hard labor to bring the food home. You know what I mean? And so like, that that was like the breadwinning and then someone has someone else has to pick up the weight now mm-hmm. and that's like cooking the meal and making sure the house is clean because the boys are like busy at the farm doing the hard work not to say like doing the housework is easy it's not no. <laughs> none of it none of it is easy mm-hmm. but it's just like two different people picking up different weights i think and so like when you're a first generation coming here to like this new environment, this new culture, you're kind of like seeing like, oh, but like my friend Sally down the street doesn't have, doesn't do this, you know, like her mom doesn't do that for her dad. Like what's up with that? And then you start to question and you start to like want to be like, no, it doesn't have to be like that. I forgot the point I was going with that, but here we are. I think I got what I wanted to cross. <laughs> no, I'm like glad you, I'm really glad you brought that up because uh, I, again, like at one point I thought we were going to take like a more academic route with this episode, but I had read an article that was talking about, it was more like an op-ed piece that was talking about how like one of the reasons they think that, you know, machismo like kind of like 
has such a tight hold on the Latinx community is because when people immigrate here, like the U.S. does a fucking fantastic job of just like stripping you of everything, of making you feel like you are just the lowest thing in the world, which is essentially like emasculating a man. And so they then, because the they in the new community, society, whatever that they're in, now feel emasculated they take a they turn around and turn that back into the home where they can be hyper masculine to the point of toxicity and it's Mm -hmm. like i have no control of what's happening out there in the world but i can control what is happening in this house and so it's hard yeah Mm -hmm. yeah because like while that should not be the response that also should not be what the u.s does to people when they're Mm -hmm. trying to like just be better right so come here for the american dream man what is that that's a whole other topic (laughs) yeah that's that's a whole whole other topic (laughs) i could have gone in i could have easily gone into that one after (laughs) things that i saw this week but yeah Mm. um and because like those situations lead to okay i can't control what's what's going on on outside of my household i can control what's under my roof right they become right over controlling and can't express their feelings cannot express what's going on in their mind because the con i don't want to say obsessiveness but it kind of feels that way sometimes where it's like i need to control everything under this roof and that's where it's going to stay But yet you can't express why you're feeling that way because you're told you cannot sulk in your feelings because you have no time to sulk in your feelings. You need to work hard for your family and you need to act because of X, Y, and Z. And that becomes, uh, they take it all on their significant other. They take it out on other family members. You, because what's going on around you, you, you find it very difficult to express your feelings. And then when, shit really hits the fan you combust and everyone around you gets hurt because you weren't able to express your feelings and say hey this is how i feel it's hard out here i i wish i had some help just say it say it out loud does it make you any less of a person and because i'm not going to say man but i'm just going to say it doesn't make you any less of a person for feeling that way we're all human So don't be afraid to express your feelings and say what's on your mind. Not everybody's perfect. It is a difficult, because it's like, it's not a black and white thing. It's actually kind of what I'm realizing in this conversation. Like, I really thought we were going to get on here and be like, "Mm, feminist till we die. Like, this is the way you do things. But it's (laughs) like, it's not a black and white issue is the problem. Even looking at it from just the one side, which is like, as a woman, like, it's not like I think you can understand that there are reasons why people act the way they do, but it doesn't mean you condone them. It doesn't mean that you support them. It doesn't mean that you think it's right. It's just like that makes sense, but you got to stop it. You can't do that. So, yeah. But what I was going to, okay, so this is what I was saving for later. Um, as I said, like the opposite of machismo is marianismo. And the root word of marianismo is marina or mariana, which is associated with la malinche, who is also known as la chingada. And what is the root of chingada, chingar, which I'm not going to say what that means. It's a bad word. And... La chingada in Mexican slang has been turned into la chingona, which has now been like reclaimed as like this very like feminist, like badass woman kind of concept. And that's because like la malenche was also known as la chingona because she's considered like a traitor among her people. And like as society progresses, the views on her are changing, but back probably not that long ago, actually. Um, She was considered a traitor to her people and still is in some circles because, so she was a native woman of the Nahuatl peoples. Yeah. 
And she was stolen from her land. And the reports vary because she was either gifted to Cortez or she was chosen by Cortez. Mm. It, mm-hmm. It's hard because this was like the 1500s. So reports mm-hmm, are mm-hmm. not very. He did not care. He he was a man of I will do what I want to do. And that is it. Again, goes back to what we're saying. My like way, no the type highway. of morals at <laughs> nothing, all. No morals. Nothing. Like, And he was would rampage these communities and just tear them apart Mm -hmm. and so she served as like the go-between right for that and some historians say that you know because they were able to communicate with the native peoples in the areas that they were conquering rampaging that his destruction was like not as bad as it could have been still pretty fucking bad Mm -hmm. when you like really read up on it and see what was going on i don't know how much worse it could have gotten i really don't understand how it could have gotten any worse but you know neither here nor there but yeah so and she's also known as like the mother of the mesitos because she had children with cortez and again like it's not known whether it was against her will or she wanted to but i think like when you steal somebody from their home it's always going to be against their will (laughs) Yeah. Um, she was in survival mode for sure. She was in survival mode. That's I. That's how I see it. She was in survival mode, and I'm sure a lot of people are out here talking about like, oh, well, she had a choice. She could have left, and she could have sacrificed her own life to not be a traitor. But no, and she was she was like 25 when she died. So when all of this happened, she was like a a literal child, like between eight and ten, is what I keep reading. Oh, so no. it's like, yeah. But this like this legend like lives on in mm-hmm. Mexican culture, and there's like a word for it. It's malinchismo and malinchista, which are like the negative words used to describe Mexicans who like deny their cultural heritage because, like Malinche, they are aiding in like the the Americanization, the Europeanization of Mexican culture because they prefer that to their own culture. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, and a lot of people say that like, this is the root. This is like the quote unquote original sin, the whole Adam and Eve thing. Like Mm -hmm. Eve ruined everything for all women because she could not control herself. It's Mm -hmm. all Eve's fault Mm -hmm. at the end of the day. And the same thing, it's all like, completely disregarding the fact that she was an actual child Mm -hmm. it's apparently her fault that cortez conquered the entire aztec empire and so there are people who believe like this is like the root of why men do not or why men are so like hostile to women or can be so hostile to women because Mm -hmm. they see this and are like women can be traitors women can be liars so okay (laughs) <laughs> but like a ch- an innocent child, right? Who's probably grew up right. learning that you have to respect your elders, specifically the men in the family. Mm-hmm. You specifically, you don't say no, you know, like, oh, you, if this older man is it's- telling you to do this thing, then yeah. you do it. Thank you. She probably had no idea what was going on. Like no clue. And like, who knows what Cortez was hiding? Like he could have been like, oh, what did that person say? I just want to be their friend. As know. a child, you're going to be like, sure, dude, I got you. Cause I don't know what the hell's going to happen to me. Cause she's like, what, eight or 10? Like that's crazy to actually have, like, to actually, the fact that she has like that reputation is wild because she grew up learning those things. Right. What did they want her to do? do unlearn everything that you taught her was correct (laughs) no and it's like they were married at some point like i'm not entirely sure like at what age she ended up being with cortez Mm -hmm. because a a couple of the ways it's reported is that she was stolen from her home sold to another area and then from there was again like sold back to either cortez or like gifted to or who knows um but 
you know, and I think I read somewhere that it was part of like their culture to like aid their men, aid their husbands in their pursuits of what they were doing. So again, like if that's what you grow up learning, like, and you're a fucking child, like, what are you supposed to do? And oh, sorry, the reason that the whole that Marina is associated with her is because, as you know, the Spanish brought over Catholicism. And then so she mm-hmm. was baptized. And after she was baptized into the Catholic Church, that's the name she was given. So she stripped of her uh... name, she stripped from her home. And still, yeah. to this day, there are people who are like, that was a traitor. It's her fault. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. My God. Hmm. People are relentless, ruthless. My God, Jesus. But then that brings in the whole, like, the re- reclamation. I don't know how you say that, but I think right, uh, reclamation yeah. of La Chingona because there has been a whole move since, like, the 90s to change the way that people view her to change people's viewpoints on her because like i feel like to us it's very like of course like that makes sense that she would do that because she was trying to survive right not because she wanted her homeland and all of her home to be destroyed right it was because like what do i do i die or i do this right so yeah and like I said there are a lot of people who think that it's like part of the reason that like the hatred for or not hatred the like why machismo is so ingrained because I know in Mexico there's been a lot of news for the past couple of years about how prevalent femicide is there yeah and then in general like we hear especially during covid and in the U.S. about how domestic violence rates like soared because people were, were just so enclosed. Like machismo is a contributing factor to all of those things. Like those things happen because of whatever you want to call it, machismo or toxic masculinity. To me, I'm pretty sure they're the same thing. I, right. I view them the same. Like these things are able to happen because people hold these beliefs and don't want to let go of them. Mm. Damn, that's so wild about I'm like still in shock about it. Like I'm still thinking about it. Like that's crazy. Like to this day. Like what did you expect? That reminds me of a. It was so crazy. So you know how we did the um, woman to know in history episode. Yeah. Literally right after that, my cousin had sent me. And this was before the episode was even released. Like she had sent me like this article about these three women that were, that contributed to the independence of the Dominican Republic. And they had to like, it was like three sisters and they were, oh, I wish I remembered more details, but they were captured by the dictator at the time and they like fought against the dictator and they kind of like started a whole revolution around that. And it like her story reminds me of that, of those three sisters, which is crazy because it's like, they're in, it's two different approaches to like, kind of like survival mode where it's just like, no, I'm going to fight against this. And also like, I have to do this in order to survive, which is completely like two different things, but it's also like, strong women in moments of crisis which is crazy but yeah that was my little that was the one piece i had to keep because when i read it when i was reading about it i was like oh my god and i'll link them in the show notes for anybody who wants to look into them Mm -hmm. i don't know you guys this episode i don't know where i thought it was gonna go but i guarantee i promise you it was not this it's like it's too multifaceted to cover in like one Right. Clean shot. Mm-hmm. But we, um, <laughs> we did. Uh, so my last question to you guys is more like a looking forward type of deal. Like mm-hmm. I said, you know, we all know that generational trauma is a thing and those cycles can be perpetuated from generation to generation. Right. Because we do that thing where we're like, well, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Like this is the way that it's always been done. Let's do it. But what ways are you guys looking to 
break like that generational trauma, generational cycle of machismo in y'all's families? So for me, it's funny. I had this conversation with Constantine like not too long ago, um, right before we recorded because we're watching Love is Blind. And one of the guys on the show, he's like, you know, cooking up a storm. So he's he made her breakfast and Constantine was like, oh, my God, he's a chef. I was like, bro, no, they tell you what his profession is every time they introduce the couple. It says right there. I, I forgot what it is, but it says right there. I don't think he's a professional chef. Maybe like he cooks on like he likes to cook, maybe. And I was like, you know what? Maybe his mama taught him right. Maybe his mom taught him how to cook. So that way he doesn't have to depend on a woman to feed him. Could be that too. So I said, yes. So what I what I intend on doing, what I would like to do is if I have a son, sons, plural, who knows? You never know. I would like to make sure that whenever I'm cooking, that they're around. And as they get older, like have them engage with me, like, you know, do like cook with me. Like at first it'll start as start off as, okay, you're going to sit here with me. You're going to watch me cook. You get a little bit older. Okay. Why don't you pass me this, pass me this so I can cook. And then at, as we get older, so now you're finding yourself like cooking and now you know what to do when I'm making certain dishes, because that's it. You've seen me do it. Right. And now I can actually be like, Hey, Okay, now you can take over. You you know what what's the next step I usually do after, you know, putting this on the stove. Let's go. I I also want to teach my kid like you, you can be independent. You don't have to rely on anybody. Don't be don't let your significant other like don't treat them as a crutch. You know. So, I want to do that and then for my daughters, don't take any shit. <laughs> that's what i want to do so yeah hmm. i don't know i feel like i feel like growing up i saw all that stuff and like i know i don't want that in my home so like i want to be able to teach my child either woman or either girl or boy um you know, how to do laundry on their own, how to wash dishes, how to cook from their dad. That, that, that's the thing too. Like Norn cooks. Right. So like, they're already going to see that a man is cooking in the kitchen. Right. So I'm great there. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to see that we split things like house chores, you know, like it's not every day, like we go walk Rex together. It's not like I'm going to do this by myself because it's my job to do this, or I'm going to do this by myself because it's my job to do that. Like there are times that I, I wash the dishes. Sometimes I washed them last night. That was great. I went to go throw out the trash. I do that all the time. And it's like you, those things that you, that are meant for like, like for uh, things that are portrayed to be for the man. I do some of those things and some of the things that are portrayed to be for the woman, Norn does those things. And I think that will show like when we raise our kids, like it's not like Christina was saying, it's not all black and white. Like there's, it's, it's a, there's a huge gray area. So yeah, I don't know how specifically I'm going to do that, but uh <laughs> I already got the cooking part down, so <laughs> we're good there. <laughs> um, I think for me, I want to let not just my sons, but also like my daughters, like just my children in general. Like I want them to know that it is okay to like express your emotions it's okay to cry like when you feel hurt, when you feel upset, um, when you feel frustrated, like it's mm -hmm. okay to cry at those things. Yeah. And I think specifically for my sons, I want them to know that like 
the act of loving and being loved, like that's not a feminine thing. That's an everybody thing. Everybody Mm -hmm. wants to feel loved. Everybody wants to be loved. And the ways that you express that, the ways that you show that are okay. And I think, yeah, I think that's maybe, I'm sure there'll be more things as I actually have children, but like for my daughters, I am like the same way as Amanda. I just don't take any shit. Don't, you don't have to, if it's you by yourself, you'll be fine. If it's you with somebody, you'll, you'll be fine. Um, yeah, I think that's what it is. And that, you know, that their parents are like in an equal like partnership or like right. in a partnership. Yes. Some days it's not always equal, but like they're there for each other mm-hmm. and you should not settle for any less or take someone who will give you less than that. Yeah. I think that's it. You guys had such good answers. I'm just like, oh, no. but I got the cooking down. <laughs> I think for me, cause like my mom always told us the three of us growing up it's like Mm -hmm. we are all equal here no one is above you and you're not below anybody Mm -hmm. and so I think partnership is like I think that's the route route I'll go like teaching them and enforcing in them that you that they are not better than anybody in this world and no one but nobody is better than you are yeah oh yeah and just like maintaining that. that like just always maintaining like that equalness that partnership like Mm -hmm. even if you're in a relationship like if that person were to leave you or you were to leave that person knowing that you're going to be perfectly fine all on your own because you didn't need them Mm -hmm. and it's it's basically what you were saying before Christina my mom always was big on that she was she was always like make sure you have a good job because god forbid like you and Norn don't work out you can still survive on your own and I was like but mom, why would you say that? She was no, like, you never know. know. You never know. And I was like, okay. It's <laughs> no, it's very true. My mom was the oh. same way too. My mom's very big on that where it's like, she's just like, I, I want you to make sure you finish school because you can always make sure you can rely on your career, your education. That will take you. She goes, knowledge is power. Yeah. And it will take you far. And God forbid, she said, she would be the same thing. God forbid, Constantine, you and Constantine don't work out Mm -hmm. that's okay you know how to do things on your own you know how to live on your own she goes don't know what is tonta you're not a burro you know you're not stupid yeah she hates using and she hates using the word stupid but she's like you're not dumb you know yeah so i think that's where i'll go partnership yeah yeah (laughs) (laughs) just be a good human being like please person yes (laughs) my god um okay Yes, but that is our episode, you guys. Thank you for mm-hmm. listening. I really like this one. Again, like I said, oh, there's so many layers to it, and I don't even think we like got past the first one. Uh, so we may pick this up mm-hmm. again in the future. Um, huh, shameless plug. Amanda posted a video on Friday that is like <laughs> directly correlated with this, and it was a complete <laughs> accident. So it was, I swear, was a complete accident, very random. But if you guys haven't checked it out, go on, you go, go on our Glowing Up Latina YouTube page channel, go on my little spin off videos. It'll be right there. It's real Listen. quick 10 minutes. And I haven't watched it yet. That. I'm excited. <laughs> and hit that subscribe button while you're there. Why? Because yes. yes. we're nine people away from our next giveaway, you guys. Woo-hoo. You're gonna want this merch, y'all. You're gonna want it. You really are. We got this, some of the stuff in. It's cute. Can't wait to show Amanda and Liana. <laughs> <laughs> um, you guys, what's making y'all glow this week? Uh, my family's having bingo night again tomorrow. So I'm very excited. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, gonna do that. Gonna have some family time this weekend. Same, same, same. Uh, I see my family tomorrow. It is my my madrina's birthday. It was my uh, it was my madrina's birthday um during the week. So we are going to have dinner tomorrow, and I'm excited because they have this yummy seafood pasta. Mm. And I <laughs> love it. Yeah, looking forward to it. How about you? Um, for me, okay. 
So I am reading uh, Annette Chavez Macias' new book, Too Soon How for is Adios. It? Very good. I'm about a fourth yes. the way through. Um, and, you know, when we did Big Chicas Don't Cry, my Mimi, actually, my grandmother, um, read it and she loved it. And so I was laying in bed the other night reading it. And I was like, oh, you know what? Let me just, you know, send it to her, send it to her on Amazon. So I bought it, sent it to her house. And I didn't tell her. And she called me Thursday night and she was like, I got your package. She goes, it's so crazy. Like I was literally going to order it today, but um, she didn't get to. She ran out of time. And so she was going to order it, you know, I guess today. Mm-hmm. And... She didn't have to. It's like we're so far away Aww. and still like Aww. right there. I was like, that's so it right. really like because <laughs> I'm not I don't know when I'm going to go home again next. So it was nice. Even so far Aww. away, we're still linked. Still got it. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. <laughs> that is. Yes. So the that. book is great. I'm loving it. Um, Amanda's reading it as well. Yes, I am. I am um, depending reading on when we finish, we might bring you a mini sewed book review. We'll see. Because I have some thoughts. I have some things yeah. that I want to say. That's a pin for another uh, episode. Yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Right off the bat. I was like, what the hell? Literally. Yes. It's like that's, not even but like those are the reactions pages. you yeah. want. It is. Honestly, that to those me, that's a sign of a good want. book. Yeah. When a book makes you be like, what the? Yeah. <laughs> that's when you know it's a good yeah. book. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. Okay. Liana, when can the people find us? You guys can find us every Wednesday here on YouTube. You can find us on Spotify or wherever you listen to your podcast. Uh, leave us a glowing review because we love to hear from you guys. And don't forget to send in your Q&As. Uh, the post is pinned on our Instagram at Glowing Up Latina. Please take a look at it. Send us your questions because we are already approaching the end of the season uh share with us how you're glowing what books you're reading maybe another topic you want us to you know talk about before the end of the season or season three uh you can send that to our email at glowinguplatina at gmail.com and until next time keep glowing mija bye, bye. bye.